Uh, start the YouTube video now. Bam. All right. So, in fact, I should go up. Before we look at these patch notes, I have to tell everyone, get your brain out of Overwatch 1 mode. If you come in with an Overwatch 1 brain, you're going to just have a problem with these changes. If you come in with an Overwatch 2 brain, you're going to be like, this makes complete sense. That has to be stated. Secondly, what you need to keep in mind is Blizzard's stupid fucking balancing point, Tracer. Just in the back of your head, think, hmm, hmm, how does this benefit Tracer? Keep that in the back of your head. So, let's look at the patch notes. First one, Tor. Uh, cooldown reduced from 10 to 8 seconds. And then Rivet Gun, his alt fire consumption is reduced from 3 to 2. Uh, I will just say, this I have always wondered about for the longest time in Overwatch's history. I have no idea why it's 3 ammo a shot. Why does Widow get, like, fucking 15 shots? And then Torb gets, uh, I think, 5. Uh, it really made no sense to me, especially when this did 100 and... Uh, they lowered it to 110 damage? Like, it, it, it's the worst shotgun in the game by far. Uh, it has the lowest damage, it has the longest reload, it has the worst spread, and it has the worst falloff. Um, the only reason his rivet right click is good is because of overload. Um, if it wasn't for overload, it would be garbage. Um, yes, it's one of the worst. So, Torb getting buffed. Not a bad thing. And now, people are saying Torb didn't need it. And Torb is like a sleeper pick. He is actually incredibly strong. But, again, don't think Overwatch 1. Think Overwatch 2. Overwatch 2 Torb, we need the ability for him to fight anything. Remember, the whole idea of counters is going away. So how would Torb fight X? How would Torb fight Y? Well, he needs more, essentially, availability. Um, so Overwatch 1, I completely see people being like, he's kind of strong, you don't really need to do that. And then Overwatch 2, you're like, well... Tanks that are stronger than they are now are coming for him. He needs something for the close range. He needs something basically like this. Uh, because tanks have very low cooldowns, uh, most of them at least, with their defensive abilities and their offensive abilities, um, essentially at 8 seconds, I'm assuming they just noticed that Torb just constantly got his ass beat. And they're just like, if I had 2 more seconds, I, I, I could have defended myself. Or I could have attacked myself. Or you've attacked me. I had an overload, and because I'm so dependent on it as a Torb, I couldn't use an offense. So I completely get this for Overwatch 2. Good changes as far as I'm concerned. Overwatch 1, it's a little bit of eh. At the same time, I'm not, I, I don't mind because Torb just, he's been shit on for his entire life. Um, so I'm fine with him being, I don't even want to say strong, like he, he's good. Is he Echo or Ash level strong? No. He's still weaker than them, in which case, it's not that bad. So here are the changes we are hearing about the most and the biggest complaints about. McCree. Did I, uh, initial slower damage ramping up speed has been reduced from 0.8 to 0.5. And combat roll can now be used in the air. Really, these are pretty small changes, and I get that they have a bigger impact like he can now do a couple more flanks like he's, he has some more accessibility that's cool really like this doesn't modify the hero 95 percent of the time maybe 90 percent of the time sure dead eyes quick that's fine okay it's an ultimate I, i'm not too upset about that it sucks but you can kind of deal with it combat roll while using the air again overwatch one we're just kind of like well, this doesn't make sense. You're just making a hero that was pretty damn good even better. Come in with Overwatch 2 brain. Oh, McCree doesn't have a stun. Oh, Doomfist jumped on you? You're dead. That's it. You can't move in the air. If Doomfist slams you and you don't have a stun as McCree, you die. End of statement. Also, he needs some mobility. 
just wherever. So, again, Overwatch 1, you're like, whatever. Overwatch 2, when he doesn't have a stun, all of a sudden it's like, well, how do you deal with Tracer? Can you kind of evade her? Can you avoid her a little bit? Can you roll somewhere safe? I need more versatility in Overwatch 2. Tree, Tree brings a good question. Tree asks, why are we doing this in Overwatch 1 when Overwatch 2 is so far down the road? And I would say this. If Jeff Goodman was in my chat right fucking now, the first question I would ask him, why can't you make the Overwatch 2 balance changes right now? Take away McCree's stun. Why? They can do that right now. There's nothing stopping them. So they have some plan on how to roll these things out to see how they're done and then balance them properly for Overwatch 2. So that's that's what I'm going to say. Uh, I am going to say this from a corporate standpoint. I piss off my current player base that's already pissed off and dwindling now. Or, or no, I do that. And I get to test out these changes that I'm not 100% sure on before we release Overwatch 2. So that when all the new players come back, they have a better game. It's a no-brainer. Fuck the current player base. And it's not even like, fuck the current player base. It's just like, all right, our current player base will have to figure this out. It's going to be a little bit tough for them. But then, you know, it's going to be a better game for when we sell millions of copies and everyone buys it in six months. They give us 5v5 and experimental, no one would play it. Or they would, and they would just complain the whole time and why it sucks. Um, uh, Moira changes. So, so overall, guys, McCree changes, I'm fine with. Like, yeah, it's a buff to him. Get the fucking thing out of your head that just says, oh, buff, strong hero, that's bad. It's like, whatever, like, it's not that big of a change. Anyone with any relative skill will be able to adjust for this. Um, it's not like McCree's going to be rolling over some building using high noon and killing everyone. It's not like he doesn't have fair mobility. He's just a little bit more mobile when people jump on him. And speaking of like mobility in the air, as a Junkrat player, I'm saying this. And as a Junkrat player, I, I take advantage of the fact that I throw people in the air a lot. Um, like, uh, like even coming from me, like where someone like this is this will affect me. I'm fine with it. Now the Moira change. People are bitching about this. They're just again, they're just like, oh, Moira, buff, blah. Don't worry about that. My, so Bionic Orb, instead of being reduced, so let's say Orb moves at 100 meters a second. Right now, if it latches onto someone, it goes down to 27.5%. So it'd go from 100 speed to 27.5. And what it's doing now with this buff is it's going from 100 speed to 15. So it's moving a bit slower. I say, and it's like a good bit slower. The importance of this and I cannot say this strong enough. Get your head out of your fucking ass thinking about Overwatch balance in this case. We have to step back and look at this as a designer. When you have an ability in the game, make it fucking do something. If you have a mediocre ability, it's the worst thing in the game. No one wants an ability that does shit. It, it's really stupid if it has no purpose and it feels boring and it doesn't work the way it should work. Bionic Orb, it does a good job right now, but it's like 50% effective. Really, they should make Bionic Orbs heal like 400 so that it can actually heal as it moves past everyone really fast. Or they can keep the speed where it's, or the heal at where it's at right now and have it go slower so it actually heals the target the whole way. Or in the case of someone attacking with Moira, it deals damage when you get a good orb on someone. You're rewarded for accuracy with this orb now as an attack Moira. You're also rewarded with accuracy if it's a defense Moira, too, for heal. So, people are like, oh, so you're supporting DPS Moira? Again, not Overwatch 1 brain, Overwatch 2 brain. Overwatch 1 Moira, yes, people don't like it. One, they say she's skillless, which I think uh, her, her right click or her, her main attack, I don't want to say it takes a lot of skill. But it's it's tracking to a point, and they can lower it a little bit, but it's not that bad. In fact, I don't even think it's that much different from a full charge Zarya. I'm 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 curious. It's it's probably like a 0.5 hit point, uh, like 0.5 meter difference. 
Um, I'm actually, I'm actually curious what the difference between her tracking and then Zarya's tracking is. Um, but if we think about Overwatch Two, if anyone doesn't know, Overwatch Two, the healers are more powerful than they are now, and this is after they've nerfed them, um, because tanks deal so much damage and they've removed one tank. Uh, supports can keep everyone alive the whole time. They said no one died in fights. So, we start going, alright, so supports need to do a little bit less healing. Well, let's up their damage, right? We want everyone to be more self-sufficient. If a Genji or a Tracer jumps in a Moira, it shouldn't be like, help guys, help, help, help. I'm, I'm a weak support, someone help me. In Overwatch 2, it goes, fucking fend for yourself. Now Moira can. This is great. Um, I'm fine with this. It All this does is reward accuracy. And make an ability basically useful for its like massive potential. Like, for its full potential, let's say. I'm fine with this change. In fact, this should have... This should have been the way of it. And now, let's get to the talk. This is going to be a long talk. I'll try to sum up my thoughts. That way I can get it on YouTube in a very condenser form. And then we're probably going to be talking for a while. So for the people on YouTube, this is probably going to be like an hour video. You just got to watch probably for the next five minutes as I talk down about Junkrat. So, impact damage from 40 to 90. That's a very large increase, right? 50 damage. Explosion damage reduced from 80 to 60. So his AoE is now reduced. Added fall off to the impact damage. So, right now, before we go to the next point, Junkrat does 150 on a direct shot. Now we go added fall off to the impact damage. Between 15 and 25 meters, impact damage is reduced to 20%. So this means at 15 meters, you do full damage. At 25 meters, you do 20% damage. Hit scan goes down to 33%. So, Junkrat's max damage at past 25 meters is 78 on a direct hit. Uh, this is quite the reduction. This is a, a nerf of 33% damage after 25 meters. That's significant. Uh, the fact that Junkrat's damage is going to basically be a McCree shot at 25 meters, but with incredible slowness. It's pretty sig like this is a very very large nerf. Um, isn't the mines fall off twenty percent too? No. Uh, this is only with his primary weapon. Uh, also knockback amount slightly reduced. It's not a big deal. People will stay in place more, less control. Yada yada yada. So, What is my, like, my feelings on this? Junkrat right now, I love him because he has a lot of options. If I need to play long range, I play long range. If I gotta be sneaky on the flank, I can be sneaky on the flank. If I need to play close range, I play close range. If I need to play mid range, which I really, really refuse to, I can try to use cover and use mid range. This essentially takes mid and long range out of the picture. To any effectivity. Um, just completely. If you're doing 78 damage at long, long range, like, if someone else is taking advantage of it, there's kill potential, but outside of that, there's no kill potential. Right? Like, past 25 meters, Junkrat needs to hit three shots to kill. Uh, and that's not going to happen past 25 meters. And. I can't stress how short 25 meters is. If anyone's wondering, it's 18.1 meters for him to go down from 150 to uh, 120 to be his uh, current damage. So at 18.1, anything past that's a nerf. Anything before that's a buff. Um, also, it is how far the, the grenade travels is based on its it, it, how much damage it does. So if you shot it straight up in the air and came back down, it does minimum damage. So. I don't know, some people, um, when they saw me, 
Um, I'll shoot in the air sometimes so that I get a bunch of bouncers where I'm standing at, and you can set up traps or do something like that. Do something like creative with that. That's gone. Uh, shooting at the spawn door. Pretty much gone. Right? Any type of accurate, like, arcing shot, it's basically 78 damage. So, you have to understand that we're losing a lot. Um, a lot of the times I shot around corners, like to get bank off a wall to get behind someone that they're flanking. Again, 120 damage down to 78. And also with this, even the AoE damage, uh, because the AoE damage doesn't have fall off, so his his splash damage it's it's nerfed obviously from 80 to 60, but that doesn't suffer from fall off damage. So you will do a little bit of splash damage, and it'll still do the 60, but um, definitely less than what it was. Where I start getting really questionable about this change, and this is, don't take this like verbatim, but like this is just what I'm, in, in my head, I go, all right, Trunkrat's now a close range hero. Does he have anything to mitigate long range? That he has a, does he, like he has no defensive abilities. Does he have any damage to mitigate long range? No. Does he have any abilities to tank, heal, or teleport? No. So right now, they have a close range hero, essentially a shotgun based hero, with no extra health, no defensive abilities, no like ways to mo like to be mobile. So the whole thing with Doom Reaper May. And how they deal with long distances is that they got, or even Genji as well, with the whole deflect, wall, wraith form, shadow step, any of these abilities, they're gone. So you're like, okay, wait a second. And this is the thing, like, step back from Junkrat and just think as a design designer. Do you want to design a close range hero with none of that? I, I, before this, I would say no. I would say that's dumb. Why would you ever do that? If you have a close range hero, you have to give them some survivability, as we saw with Sim and her extra health. Um, at least she has teleport to mitigate long ranges, right? She can go from cover to cover with teleport. From a design point of view, I would never allow this here, this archetype to exist. Like, don't even think about Junkrat. Just this archetype of... This is the glassiest cannon in Overwatch, if they go through with this. Which is actually, I'm kind of a little bit hopeful about. I know that sounds weird, but... Uh, I like when heroes have a uniqueness to them, and you can feel it. This will definitely do that. Junkrat, if you're chilling in a place where you're strong, fuck me. Like, don't fuck with the Junkrat. Don't. And so, a lot of my style of playing is Flankrat. Where I take an area, I take a closed-in area, and I set up basically my, my, my rat nest, if you will, and I just harass from that. This perfectly fits the way I play. Now, maybe I should say perfectly, nearly perfectly, because I do do a lot of long-range stuff, and I am pretty accurate at long ranges. So I do lose that from my toolkit, but I definitely gain something else. Um, but the whole idea of the archetype of this super glass cannon it's it's risky um and <laughs> while he does do 150 damage and everyone's like oh my god you one shot a tracer again we have to stop step back get rid of your overwatch one brain put on your overwatch two brain and this is why i said at the first part keep tracer in your mind with no stuns how do you deal with the tracer as a junk rat, right? And we're trying to make all heroes viable. The whole idea of, oh, they have a tracer, I have to go McCree, is gone. How do you deal with tracer as a junk rat if he was in his current state? You wouldn't. If trap doesn't lock you down, which in Overwatch 2 it doesn't, how does junk rat deal with tracer? 
he doesn't. You want close range against Tracer. You one shot her already, don't you? No, you do 120 damage. Junkrat does 120. Uh, by the way, DPS wise, Junkrat is still below Tracer at 150 damage. I meant with melee combo. Okay, so if you're at three meters with Tracer, you're gonna kill me. Um, so Tracer dunks on Junkrat in his current form. In Overwatch 2, this would be the case 100%. So, how do you do this? How do you do it? And everyone's like, oh, but you can combo Tracer to death. Uh, I will say this, good Tracers, you're dead. A good Tracer is going to kill you in one clip by the time you can detonate your concussive mine. So, you would think to yourself, well, Crow, why do you keep talking about Tracer? They're going to nerf her. Are they? What What are the four heroes that were, that were buffed this patch? McCree? Well, that's a normal Tracer counter. Torb? Definitely a Tracer counter. Moira, the one support that's, well, Moira and Brig. Uh, Moira is designed to deal with flankers, Tracer, and Junkrat, a hero that can't deal against Tracer. Seems, seems strange that they talked about having the nerf mobility heroes, and then, and then a bunch of buffs came out for heroes that, that usually dealt with her. I don't think Tracer's gonna get nerfed in Overwatch 2. Everything in this patch tells me that it's not going to happen. All the heroes that can't deal with her will start being able to deal with her. Heroes will be able to fight. This is what I wanted. And a lot of people are always said I was stupid. And it's kind of funny because it's coming true. Every hero is going to be able to fight every other hero. That's balance. So, while Trace or while Junkrat does get increased damage, don't get me wrong. Outside of twenty, outside of eighteen meters, this is a nerf. And everyone's like, "Well, this, he's going to destroy Reinhardt now. He's going to absolutely destroy Reinhardt." Junkrat's DPS at one fifty is lower than Hanzo's current. For anyone that didn't hear that the first time, Hanzo's DPS right now, with reloads, is 167. I believe that's what... Let me just double check my, my, my notes. Yes. With 150 damage, Junkrat's at 158. So Hanzo does nine more DPS right now without reload. If we're talking burst damage, if you just shot your clip and that was it, Tracer does 240. With Junkrat as he is now, or on the experimental card, Junkrat does 231. So Junkrat will still do less burst damage than Tracer and less consistent overall DPS than a Hanzo. So these levels of damage types that are this this level of damage it's in Overwatch. We've already seen it. In fact, it's right there right now. You guys just don't know it. Um So this this DPS that he's getting is well within what we know of in Overwatch. Um But now, Junkrat, instead of being area denial, in fact, I would just fucking take him out of that. The, the whole area denial thing with Junkrat, throw it away. Throw it away. What Junkrat is, he's an indoor specialist. That's where he's going towards. That's kind of how I played him. Uh, people that don't know, uh, earlier in my 
Overwatch career, I would spend seasons playing Junkrat a specific way. Uh, one season I played him completely long range the whole time. One time I played Junkrat only flanking. Another season I only played him flanking, but I only shot once around a corner and then I'd run away. Um, there's a lot of ways to play Junkrat, and they're pretty much the strongest one has always been flanking while staying indoors. This lends to that, but it takes away all other tools, all of his toolkit, which I'm I like, and that's where I'm really on the fence about. Uh, I really like the fact that Junkrat has all these different things he can do and, and all these different ranges to play around. And they come at a cost of accuracy, but when they do hit, which some people call luck, but I will just say it's not luck. It, you know, it paid off, but now it's like, all right, you have to play Junkrat this one way. A lot of the, the variability, the options are gone now. And they're not completely gone. Like, you still do 78 damage at longer ranges, but that doesn't do much. Um, you'll, you'll definitely have to have someone else follow up on the damage. My big question would be, uh, with Overwatch 2, what's going to happen to Hanzo and Widow? Because if Hanzo and Widow are untouched, fuck me. Fuck me. That's going to be tough. You may just be feeding supports alt at long range. Right now, that's the case, too. So you'd be feeding them less alt in the new patch as well. The biggest thing that has me on the fence about this, and I'm, I actually think this is a buff to double shield, is that 25 meters happens really quick. Very quick. And so, let's get into Overwatch. Um, let's just disable this. And that's that's reason. So what we're going to do now is I made with the uh, with the help of Fuey. I'll I'll call out Fuey right now. With the help of Fuey, I have created a little workshop code to show us the distances on maps. Let us get the spooky music back in. Measure distance. Um, and the best way to show this is I can so every time I press the gun uh, press my primary fire you're going to see uh, a number come up that's the distance it's that simple so the magic number we're looking at is 18.1 after 18.1 is a nerf the junk rat. Before 18.1, buff the junk rat. Right here is actually a little bit closer than most Reinhardt's hold, right? Most Reinhardt's hold pretty far back. Maybe right about here. Um so if I shoot the choke point, let let's let's have chat do a poll. Not not a poll, but take your guesses. Is this a nerf or a buff to this wall? What what, what are we going to think? Okay, everyone's just saying nerf. Yeah. So shooting at the choke point at this distance, he's going to be doing about a hundred damage. Um, if I'm hiding behind cover, like over here, and I'm shooting at the choke point, we're way past minimum damage. Oh, right. 
25 is absolute minimum. So at this point, all of Junkrat shots will be doing 78 damage. This is a normal shot on this map. If I want to shoot at... I'm going to be shooting right at that. So we can measure it. 31 damage. Because at this angle, you'll get things going back to the other doorway. So that... My shots before did 120. Now it's going to do 78. Um, obviously, spawn shots. Right, so... This... A thousand range. Um, since it measures the distance in the air... That does 78 damage. So all of these shots, like this, at spawn, minimum damage. Does this fact factor in arc? No, this is a, a it's a ray cast, so this is a bit of a straight line. If it actually calculates the arc, yes, it's going to be a lot sooner than we think. Even this to like this wall right here, we're at minimum damage. Especially if I go like this and knock it into the wall. Right, we're, we're, we're way past minimum damage. Things like this to get damage on the choke point. Minimum damage, right? Uh, These are all 78 damage shots. You want to see something crazier? Let's say I'm defending up here. Like, I don't know, everyone does. To the ground. Do we think it's a buff or a nerf? Just to the ground from here. Nerfs? Yep. You're probably doing less than 100 damage here. So, if you're defending here, you're going to do less than half damage. Uh, I say less than 100 damage. Maybe if you're shooting straight down, you're going to get a little buff. But as soon as you start going like this, you're starting to nerf. So this whole thing of, oh, let me shoot the choke point. All of these grenades, 78 damage. All of these, 78 damage. Anything like this, 78 damage. Um, up here, just to the ground, I think is max. Yeah, so you're, you're, you're basically getting a very small buff to the damage. But as soon as you go over here, you're at max uh, damage. This actually makes bounces worse because it adds travel time. I believe so. So I think if I did this, I'm curious if that does minimum damage or not. I, I actually, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's... Like, 18 meters happens really quick. Like, this stuff? I mean, obviously, that's minimum damage. Everything, most things that we know of, is minimum damage. If you want to see something even more, people said 0.3 for this, for Junkrat, really good. From this wall to this wall, we're basically at a nerf already. Anything past this wall, it's definitely a nerf. Uh, so... And it's... Here's the other kicker. Does anyone notice what his minimum damage is? 78, I keep saying it. That weirdly coincides with one-shotting a two-hit point hero with a mine as well. So, past 25 meters, or past 18.1 meters, or it would probably be like, I don't know the exact numbers, but 19 or 20 meters, even with a direct shot and concussive, you're probably going to not kill um, what are the odds I actually think it's going to go through? I think it's fairly high. I think it's fairly high. Uh, I think it's really, really high. I think Junkrat is at a point where... They don't know how to balance them without making them feel obnoxious or annoying. This takes away, like, everything about that. Right? Because at this point, if Junkrat is close to you, he's accurate enough. 
it's close enough where he's actually like he's really planning his shots and you can't dodge them easily. So you could say Junkrat takes skill now because you, it's basically at a range where people can't dodge. It means I shot you and there's nothing you can do about it. Like a hit scan. So I deserve that damage. Can I show you some buff spots? The problem with the buff spots is that you have to be very risky. So here's the thing. I can't really show you buff spots because it would be like, oh, the Reinhardt pushed around this corner and I'm sitting here. Now I'm doing 150 damage. Right? I gotta wait really, really close. Like if they're right there. That's, you know, full damage. If you play back at all with Junkrat, like here, minimum damage, I think, no matter where you're at. Anywhere useful. Right, if I try to go right there, there it is. So if I'm standing here and someone's right below me, I can shoot them. But if someone's at that wall, minimum damage. Someone's at that wall, minimum damage. Uh, and if it doesn't take into, or if it doesn't take in, in uh, t if it does take the arc into consideration, everyone knows a straight line is shorter than a, a longer line, like an arc line. All of these numbers are think about ten percent less. I would just say. 10 to 15% distance less. So this right there isn't really 23 meters for an arc. It's more like 26, right? Uh, yeah, it's the buff spots. It's when you're fighting around something, around a corner. It's just interesting. Everyone... Is that what I said? A straight line is shorter than a longer line? 100% true. Um, so let's... Let's go to a different map. Uh, I'm trying to think. Let's go to King's Row. Everyone loves it. Do I think this is a buff or a nerf? Entering. This is a rework, as far as I'm concerned. This may... It's a rework. You're losing so much and you're gaining a lot, but it's completely changing how he's played. So if I'm shooting at the point, that's a nerf. So you're doing probably 100 damage there. If you're at that statue, minimum. I mean, guys, like, this is... Like, if I'm shooting very basic shots, like, these are all nerfs. And the thing that sucks is it just, like, even at minimum damage... If they gave, if it, if fall off went down to 25% instead of 20, and he did like 81 or 82 damage a hit on max fall off, so you could combo with a mine to kill a 200 hit point hero, that'd be great. But at this range, at this range right here, well, no, I'd still do about 100. Uh, basically at max range. You lose the combo completely. My genius is finally. Recognize. Just 100% if someone's at that choke point, I cannot kill them with a nade mine combo. Why make shots bounce if they're all line of sight shooting? Um, don't know. But like that, I mean that right alone I'm, I'm at max fall off just bit doing bank shots like i can't stress it enough 25 meters is really really short most points are, aren't even 25 meters wide or they're not even they're basically like they are 25 meters wide at the minimum so 
it just and then like obviously it would be a buff uh if you're on the ground i mean that what really i don't like is that it really it buffs junkrat to just stay with the tank it kind of forces junkrat to either play a super flanky style and be super aggressive or you have to stick with the team and that's it what would be a fair max range you think a fair max range for 100 damage, I'd say right there. If they added 10 more meters to it, I think I'd be fine with it. Instead of 15 to 25, they made it... I mean, even you know, they could start from 25 to 30, but 25 to 35 is where I think it would be nice. Like... This is even... I mean, just shooting from there to this corner is minimum damage. Um, a lot of point threes that Junkrat used to be decent at are now really, really bad. Like this point. Like if someone's right at this corner, I do... It's now a nerf. no point the main tank if these buffs go through no red if you haven't been listening uh, uh this is actually a buff for tanks like if i'm right here i'm doing 78 damage a shot to anything right even where these are bouncing at that's max range so i i'm i'm doing i'm doing 30 percent less damage the whole time you almost don't want high ground anymore no you don't I don't think you want high ground anymore. I think it would be fine if minimum damage when considering fall off should be 120, 110, 80. 78 mouse one in mine is painful when it doesn't kill. Correct, Aqua. Um, also, the thing, Aqua, like no one's noticing, is that they've made Junkrat a close... Well, everyone notices they, they made Junkrat a close range character. Obviously. But if you notice all the other close range heroes, they got extra health... And they have ways to navigate distance and mitigate damage. So Reaper, May, Doom, Genji, if you will. Uh, all these heroes have dashes or teleports, or May's case, a wall. Uh, they also have ways to defend themselves with Wraith Form, Ice Block, Deflect. Junkrat will be the first shotgun or close ranged hero with no easy mobility and uh, no defensive ability. So, as an aqua, as as an archetype, like as a designer, this archetype I would never make in a game. If I go, oh, you're gonna have this crazy, damaging close range guy, with no way to navigate the day, the the range. He has no way to get close. He has no way to use his tools. And you're like, why the fuck would you ever make that hero? And yes, I think high ground doesn't. I, I don't think you want high ground anymore. I think high ground's a red herring. Is it mine mobility? So my problem with mine is that even if mine is above you, if you haven't played drunk right much, this should push me down, right? Any explosion should push me down. No. Uh, if I wasn't, if mine gave me, if I was, if mine gave me fifty percent damage resistance or no headshots and allowed me to do things like that. Maybe I would consider it mobility. But if you're like, oh, there's a sniper up there. Oh, let me go over here. Right, you, you, you just die. Um, it's not like Wraith Form. It's not like Teleport. It's not like Wall. You don't got any things. Is Trap a defense? Fuck, if you think Trap is a defense, I'll trade you Deflect for it. How about that? Like, Trap, Hammond can roll through. Doomfist can punch over. Lucio can speed boost through it. Uh, Tracer can jump and dash through it. Same thing with Genji. Uh, half the time it doesn't really work. It's more of a rework? Yes, I, I would say... I think this is a rework for Junkrat. Uh, I'm trying to think, is there any map... You know what, let's... Here we go. 
Oh, it's it, I, I'm gonna have to hopefully get lucky. Now arriving at Yi Jiang Tower. Oh, I got lucky. Holy shit. Okay. So this is where some people say junk rats are incredibly strong, right? This is one of the strongest maps. So if I'm right here and I'm shooting at this wall, I've already lost damage. I don't know what the fuck to say about this. Right? Like, this... I've lost damage on one of his best maps in the game. How much was it that reduced on the wall again? This wall is 20 meters. So, 18.1 is when you're when you hit 120. I I would have to guess what it's like at 20 meters. Well, actually, I don't even have to guess. It would be the halfway point between 150 and, and 78. That's still 130 that they're standing there. No, I thought... I thought the Junk Ride Discord had at 18.1 meters is 120 damage. I mean, here to here, look, here to here, this wall, like shooting across this wall, you're at max fall off. I mean, you're doing 78 damage hitting someone right over there. And again, it's where my cursor is at, not the actual grenade bounce. So yeah, well, you're at 20 meters from this point to right there. Uh, Jack Frost, uh, Discord, you put a table. So at 18.1, so at 19 meters, you'd be doing 117. If you're looking for one-shot potential, Aqua, it looks like it's at... Well, one-shot potential is basically just right before it. If you're talking with uh, combination with uh, Concussive Mind. So it would probably be at like 23, 24 meters is when it, it changes. So right, I would say right about here. Oh, sorry. I was I was aiming up, which obviously makes it larger. I'd say right about here is where you have to. This is where your one shot would be not viable. It would be very risky. I legit all think this does is delete gameplay. Yeah, this is this is actually yeah. the more I think about it, this is I think this is a bad change. All they had to do was go back to 130. Yeah, that may be possible. I don't know. This... Fuck. What about nano junk? <laughs> Defensive matrix is ass? <laughs> uh, yeah, nano junk would... I mean, I don't care that it one-shots 200 hit point heroes that Basically, so does fucking Nano Blade, but Nano Blade's really consistent. You can't eat it, and it's uh, it's just better. Nano Junk can kill Sim McCree now. I mean, before Nano Junk did 180, uh, Junkrat was the worst target in the game to Nano Boost because it actually 
didn't change any it didn't change 90% of the breakpoints in the game um, it only changed breakpoints on the tanks and only some of them so now that if he gets 150 damage then yes if you're very close then yes you, you can one shot people but as soon like a nano ram at from here to the wall if I'm nano boosted I don't kill anyone right you can double this damage Na nano boost does 50% you can double this damage I still won't one shot a 200 hit point hero I just don't see how the idea of main tank being threatening in close range and controlling space is possible with the sheer number of close range tank busters in the game. Uh, so, all I'd say for that is tanks are overpowered right now. If you don't believe me, read up on Overwatch 2 on why tanks... What... what the devs have figured out from removing a tank in the game. Everyone became immortal. They said people didn't die because tanks did so much damage, so much more than they mitigate, that it was almost impossible to kill people with good healers. That's why they nerfed healers in Overwatch 2. And right now, healers, they're saying, are the most important role, they're the most impactful. So, what does it tell us about tanks here? They have too much health, they do too much damage, they have too good of um, defense, mit uh, damage mitigation, all of those. I think you're underestimating the potential of a nano junk flank only having one alt usage and one tap potential on like 20 heroes. I think you're putting too many eggs into the nano basket. Um, I would I would just say I would never depend on nano blade or basically nano to win me any games ever in any context as a, as a designer I, I'm not gonna I don't give two fucks if you find this abusive combo you can try to use it they do it with Genji and people deal with it with Genji nano blade is hundreds of times more effective than nano rat even with this buff The, the ability to one-shot? McCree is the fucking ability to one-shot. Right? But it costs two alts? Who gives a fuck? <laughs> like, alts suck! If they removed alts from the game, better game. So, uh, if they if you use two alts to kill an entire team and win the game, who cares? It's two fucking alts! You get them back, buddy! Um. But yeah, it's, uh... It's pretty ridiculous. And if people can shut down a nano blade, they can shut down a nano jump rat. Right? So people are already practiced against methods to deal with them. And the crazy thing is, uh, you keep on talking about nano junk rat in this case. Junkrat's slow reload, it's not slow, it's just an average reload, but basically he gets five shots and a reload and then Nano's done. So in five shots, if a D.Va's there, two of those seconds are gone. So what, you got two to three shots, maybe? Maybe you got, maybe you got two shots, I'll say. So maybe you can one-shot people? You can one-shot two people if you're lucky? Um, but again... Ryan, for people that think concussive mind is mobility, using two concussive minds, you're still slower than a Reinhardt charging. You're still slower than any type of Lucio speed with or without the amp uh, matrix. Uh, you're slower than Soldier running. You're definitely slower than Hammond. You're slower than pretty much everything in the game. Uh, using two minds out of spawn to get this to the point quicker only saves you about a second and a half. It's the more I play, the more I think, just conserve your minds. Just get to the point a second later and have two, two concussive minds. Yeah, so nano boost I'm not worried about. Also, guys, when you're thinking about game design, 
Fuck the synergies. Make a fun hero. Make a fun, interesting, creative hero, and then figure it out from there. Don't go, oh, can I make this hero because, oh, it's going to interact with this really bad. No, just make the hero and then deal with it later. Slower than a sim teleport? Yep. Your minds may make you slower, but you also gain more velocity than that. That Ryan doesn't. Uh, I mean, you get a very small increase of velocity, but it's always up at a 45 degree angle. Like, that's the problem with Junkrat's velocity, is that, yes, it does increase, but it's always up at an angle. So I really... Uh, guys, I think I talked myself into disliking this change. Now people will be like, oh, but you get all this benefit from it. I know. I can play with that benefit, no problem, but I... I, I don't you think... Don't you think there's already enough close range heroes in overwatch with two mines up to 540 damage boost from close range so you can pop a winston um i get that there's all of these theoretical things but if you're like oh you can use all this to pop a winston in like three seconds and i'd be like mccree can hit four headshots and you're dead as well in two seconds Uh, don't try to line up perfect scenarios because look, look, guys, I'm a junk rat player. I'm a long time junk rat player. And you're like, oh, you can, you can just crush with junk right now. You, you'll just kill a Winston, just hit all your shots, hit all twenty one percent of your motherfucking shots. What's that? Twenty one percent, twenty one percent, nineteen percent, twenty percent. So if you're like, oh, just hit five shots on Winston, I'll hit one, and I'm not a half bad junk rat. So I don't know what to say about that. Uh, again, McCree can just headshot people for the same damage junk rat does. Uh, Hanzo, for people that are saying, oh, you can just kill Winston super fast, Hanzo right now in the game has higher DPS than junk rat does with this buff. Hanzo's DPS with reload is 167. Junkrat at 150 damage with reload is DPS 156. No, I'm saying primary Ryan, primary Ryan, you'll kill Winston or Ryan. So you got 240 damage. You hit him with one grenade. That takes you to, what, 390? So you're already wrong. It would take... An extra shot and Winston would die? Is is Reinhardt at 550? No, he got lowered to 500. So yeah, so double mine, double shot? Yes. But, and now this is when we talk about... Junkrat has no defensibility and he has no uh, mobility. When you use both of your mines to kill someone in this form of Junkrat, and this is why, like, if you're here at the beginning of the talk, Junkrat's archetype is now Glass Cannon. In fact, it's the most Glass Cannon thing out there. If you do not have your Concussive Mines, you have no way to defend yourself, and you will die to anyone. So if you use your whole load on a Winston, and you're just out in the open, or you're in the air because you use two Concussive Mines really close, any hit scan is going to kill you in a second or two, and then you've lost your advantage. Also, by the time you try to get two hits two concussive mines and two shots on a winston he's probably thrown out in his bubble he's probably been healed and he's probably you know backing up and, and he's going to be fine i'm like i'm not going to ignore the fact that you can destroy with 150 damage but you gotta understand mccree's headshot does 140 so there's little to no difference between mccree's headshot and a drunk shot at 150 um not only that if a winston's jumping at me and like i try to shoot him in the air like that Okay, at least that's 11 meters. But as soon as he gets a little bit... After he leaps, you do only 78 damage max. 
Brian walks at you, doesn't shield, pin, or use any abilities. You can combo him really easy. Yes. I'm... I'm not sure what that point's supposed to illustrate. Yes, if a tank runs at you and uses no damage and no defensive abilities... Okay, Sonya. Okay. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. I'm just like, yeah. Yeah, if someone does nothing, you'll kill them. I mean, look, Junkrat can definitely kill someone at 50 meters with the change if they don't move and they run into their grenades three times in a row. Is Junk now the first projectile to have fall off? Technically, May had fall off beforehand, and now it's projectile. So, I don't know, guys. The more I think about this... Oh, and someone's like, oh, but his alt charge wasn't changed. When you get alt really fast, again, most of your damage will be nerfed. Any damage you deal that's increased, understand that when Junkrat's damage was increased to 130 for an 8% increase in damage, he only he got a 10% alt nerfed. So really, Junkrat's going to be generating alt at his old rate a little bit faster than that. If you only did 150 damage grenades. Isn't the case that Junk will be nerfed and any bounce that Sig can't do? That's a decent way to check what works. Sigma's attack goes 22 meters. And then... Does it go 22 meters then blows up or goes 20 meters and explodes to 22 meters? It's weird. You, you notice the weird noises in this game. They explode after 22 meters. Explosion range is 3 meters. So he has a 25. <laughs> Does Sigma have better damage than Junkrat with explosions at, at that range then? Yeah. I don't know. Guys, I... I this is going to be rough. The question is, who generally has a tough time with Junkrat at long range? No one. People... So this is where we step back and we think about the game as Blizzard developers. Or just developers in general. Big complaint about Junkrat is long range spam. They say it's too effective. This basically takes it out of the game. So all the really annoying parts about Junkrat are pretty much gone. Um, and that's really what they want to contest with it. And they're really like their hands are really tied when they're trying to balance Junkrat, because if they buff him at all, then it's really looked down on. And it's 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 really bad. Am I going to play an experimental game? I mean, we could try to get it. Um, hold on, let me disable this. Filter. There we go. What was the code for the Junkrat range thing? There you go. Hmm. 
Another complaint would be he's Hanzo with grenades. No, Hanzo does more damage. Also, Hanzo's more accurate and long range. It's a... For most people, this is... This is a nerf. Uh, it, it, I don't, it's not even a nerf, it's a rework. That is the best way to explain this. Here, let's get this. Uh, I put it in my Discord. It's on the announcements tab if you wanted to know what that code is. It's still damaged at the end of the day. So, again, I, I, I hear you. You're like, hey, it's a lot of damage. Uh... I, I, I don't know if you just missed everything that we keep on talking about. But essentially, uh, the damage cap hits really, really fast. It's don't guys don't even call it long range. From now don't don't say Junkrat loses damage at long range. He loses damage at mid range. That that's really what it is. It's Teetering on saying Junkrat does less damage close range. Um, cause like close range is like 0 to 10 or 15 meters. Uh, 15 to 30 is mid, and then 30 plus would be long. So I would say Junkrat has lost 50% of his mid range damage. They made his worst range even worse, and his decent long range bad. Yes. For the people that just joined me here, I'll show you. Traveling to Ica. His m mid is men now? No, 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 no. Sundered. You may not understand what. 15 meters is at 18.1 he breaks even that's when um, the damage goes from is at 120 so sunder here look here to this wall that's a damage nerf so 18 damage is normal damage yeah 18 damn 18 meters would be 120. So this is probably 110 damage. If I shoot over there, this shot, this wall right here, 78 damage. How about this? How about to the ground? All right, max damage there. What about to there? Probably 90 damage, I think. All right. And we're at minimum damage. So if you want to shoot from up here to the doorway, you're doing 78 damage a shot. Also this, it tracks how far the grenade has gone. 78 damage. So you cannot spam from high ground. You can't shoot from high ground. I can't even shoot, like... 
I, I can't even shoot that fucking wall without 78 damage. Like, and this isn't even spam. Like, I can see someone, I can shoot them. That's minimum damage there. My genius is finally recognized. I swear that's not 20 meters. Uh, I mean, we can, we can, we can test this. We can, I thought I, uh, I did test this in, uh, the practice range to double check all of my numbers. Man, you're trying to be a huge brand of shooting Farron out? Yeah, it's not even worth it. So, 0510. Seems pretty accurate. It did the mountains back there. Here's the question. I mean, this is the new patch, right? Apparently, I did not save that part of the lobby. I was like, oh shit, that arc changes more than I thought. So what I'm looking for... Alright, and now let's see if I look up. It measures the arc. Oh shit, boys. Uh oh. Wop, wop, wop. It measures the arc. Now that was beautiful. Let's see. Yes, yeah, if the uh, if it measures arc, it should uh, check bounces. Yep. If you can't handle the hate, stay out of the kitchen. <laughs> yep. So there you go. It measures the arc. What about wall bounces? Yeah, for sure. And that was it right there. My genius is finally recognized. I mean, this is clearly. Clearly 15 meters. Kills her. Doesn't kill her. 